Ah, welcome to Random and Dramatic Readings. <clears throat> so, um, today's, this is where I read a, a randomly read a, a text from a, a textbook, uh, and I do it dramatically, or creatively. Uh, I'm not saying it's any good, but boy, I'm having fun. So, uh, this is from the Psychology Personality uh, Psychology, the Cambridge Handbook for Personality Psychology, uh, edited by Philip Corr and, and Gerald Matthews. And this is a tome of book. Um, it's really cool. It's got some great stuff in it. Uh, let's just do a random page. Uh, that will be a reference list. Let's not do that page. Let's do another reference list. <laughs> How many reference lists can one book have? Oh, no one's full of charts. Um, maybe I'm going the wrong way. <laughs> okay, that's a reference list. I'm just going to go back two pages. Ah, much better. Text. Prose, in fact. Um, well, this uh, the personality psychology of situations. Very interesting. Um, I'll read you the, the, the title on the other side is Riverside Situational Q-Sword because that might give you context. Because, you know, it gives me context. Ooh, 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 ooh. One. Can situations ever be viewed independently from people's perception of them or from the behaviours engaged in them for that matter? The answer, we believe, must be a resounding yes. Indeed. Interactions between people, situations and behaviour may only be studied successfully if they are kept independent at the level of conceptualisation and measurement. RIS 2007. Some might argue for a subjective or constructivist approach that persons and situations are fundamentally inseparable, that thus rendering a study of any one of them difficult or impossible. Lewin, 1936, and Johnson, 1999. However, such arguments, while philosophically interesting, risk analytic and empirical paralysis. As Jens B. Asendorf, Chapter 3, notes, subjective situations are confounded with personality traits by definition of the situation emphasis in the original. If examination of the triad begins with two or even all three of its threads already woven together, it would be impossible to use any measure thus created as a situational predictor, independent of the personal behaviour. In fact, conceptualising situations in terms of individual differences, e.g. an extrovert sees situation X in a particular way, while a shy person sees the same situation in a completely different manner effectively absorbs the study of situations into the domain of personality psychology. In order to be equal partners with personality variables in the prediction of behaviour, situational variables need to be distinguished from rather, from rather than merely mashed into them. There must be something about the situation that is influential across both the shy and extroverted person, or else social psychologists and psychological experimentalists in general will have been wrong all along. Two. At what level should situations be examined? Well, level one, the macro physico biological environmental level, might have been the advantage of being easily clustered. But while such variables undoubtedly have their effect on behaviour, location clusters like those found by Pierce and Buffard, 1974, as discussed earlier, seem behaviourally uninformative and unpsychological. The situation as it affects human behaviour must be more than its locational or physical facts. Studying situations at level 3, the micro-subjective functional level, has all the problems contested above regarding the necessity of separating person from situations, and in behavioural analysis runs the risk of circularity, perish the thought. A large literature in cognitive psychology, however, suggests that among possible levels of abstraction, the most easily communicated and generally usable is the middle of the basic one. It's Roche, 1973, Cantor and Michel, 1977. <laughs> Accordingly, it might be best to aim research on the properties of situations at level two, the mesocanonical consensual level of description, which is analogous to personality description. While the traits of any given person are of psychological interest, data is often aggregated across individuals in order to understand people in general. 
in much the same way any one subjective perception of a situation, while psychologically interesting, can be forsaken by aggregating across many such perceptions to arrive at some consensual and objective description of what that situation's properties. We finished partway through a sentence, but I only ever read one page at a time. I hope you can survive. Good day.